All right then, so hopefully now you understand at least the basics of how a SAPA project is structured. Maybe you know what the template file is, how to create route components, reusable components and static files, all that kind of basic stuff. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about how these routes are actually structured using folders and file names. So we know that if we just go to forward slash, the root level of the domain, we get the home page, which is the index component over there. And we know if we go to forward slash about, we get the about component. If we go to forward slash contact, then we get the contact component. But what if we go to forward slash blog? Well, if that's the case, then we're seeing the index component inside this blog folder. So how is that working? Well, when a request comes in, SAPA is going to look at the URL to determine what component to render. If the URL is the base URL, just forward slash over here like that, then it's going to look for an index component inside the root level of the routes folder. And it finds that right there and it shows that. If it sees forward slash about, then it's going to obviously load up the about component. If it sees forward slash XYZ, it's going to look for the XYZ component. Now, when we go to forward slash blog, what happens is it's gonna look for a blog component over here. Now, it doesn't exist, but it also looks for a blog folder then. And if that exists, then inside that folder, it will look for an index component. And it will find that, and it will show that when we go to forward slash blog, all right? Now, the same could be true for any of these other components right here. I could create, for example, if I go over here, a contact, folder and inside that I could create an index dot felt components. Now what would happen is if I go to forward slash contact now then there would be an error because we've got a contact component here but also a contact folder. We can't have both. But if I didn't have this thing right here then it wouldn't matter because when I go to forward slash contact it will also look for a contact folder and then inside that it will look for an index component. Does that make sense? So that's what we can do to create these kind of sub routes. So when would you use a folder instead of a single component? Well, normally I would use this if I needed to store either some route resources for that route or if there will be subsequent sub routes inside of it or if I needed server files, etc. So in the case of single one-off routes like forward slash or forward slash about or forward slash contact, you could use a component with that name in the root level of the routes folder. But where you might have multiple sub routes, you would create a folder for it and then create components inside that folder. For example, if we have some kind of jobs resource and we want to show an index page for that jobs, but also a create page for the jobs with a form on it, then we might create a folder called jobs. And then inside that we create an index component for this route. And we also create a create component inside the jobs folder for this route. So we have sub routes over here. Okay. So, this right here, this kind of structure is also the case for the blogs routes we currently have. All right then, so we know now that if we go to forward slash blog, we get this index component, which is found inside the blog folder over here. Now inside this blog folder, we also see this slug component. And notice that this slug part is in square brackets. And that means that this part of the route is changeable. So this is the component that's loaded up every time we click on one of these individual blogs. And that slug right here represents this part of the URL and it's changeable. That's what the square brackets mean. So if we go to a different blog, this is always different, right? So the URLs are not the same, but it's a changeable part of the URL. So imagine we had a component in here called abc.svelte, right? What would happen if we went to forward slash blog forward slash abc? Well, the following would happen. First of all, SAPA would look inside the blog folder for a component called abc.svelte and it would render that if it was there. If, however, it's not there, then it's going to fall back to this thing right here where it's saying, okay, well, this can be a changeable part of the route anyway, so I'll load up this component. And then the slug right here is represented by this part of the URL, the ABC section. And then inside this component, we can use that slug and we're using it right here. We'll see later on exactly how to do this, but we can grab a hold of that slug in order to do something like either query a database for the article or whatever resource that slug represents, okay? So in our project, 
we're going to be using jobs and not blocks. So what I'm going to do is delete this and don't worry, we will come back to all of this slow kind of stuff and changeable route parameters later on. But for now, what I want to do is create a new folder and I'm going to call this jobs. And inside here, I'm going to create an index dot svelte component. So now if we go to just forward slash jobs, like so, then it's going to look for this index component inside the jobs folder. So it's going to show this component right here. Now, all I'm going to do is paste in a very simple template just to show that this is the jobs page we've landed on. And if I now click enter on this, we can see that component rendered to the DOM. Now, also remember on the home page, we added a link at the bottom, this thing right here, and that is going to the jobs URL. So if we go over here, we can click on this to also get to the jobs page. Now we also see over here, this error component right here. Now this error component is the one that's rendered whenever we try to request a route that doesn't exist. So for example, I can go to something like forward slash jobs, forward slash create, that doesn't exist right now. And I'm gonna get this error right here where we have an error status code and also a message. So that is this error component right here. Now it's got some basic styles. It's also got the status code there and the error message. You can customize this if you want to, to give it a better design. I'm not gonna to worry too much about that for now. Now also notice that the file name starts with an underscore and that means that this component is not gonna be registered as a route in itself, okay? There is no route for forward slash underscore error that just doesn't exist i know it goes to the error page but that's because this route doesn't exist but if i go to forward slash underscore layout for example we're not going to get the layout component it doesn't exist as a route so if we don't want our component to be a route then we just put a little underscore in front of it and that's what these two things have right here so they're not routes themselves they're just things that we use to render to the dom when certain things happen right so that's the first one the error the layout right here is just something that contains some common styles or layout that is present on every other component now we're going to dive into this and the nav itself in the next video